There's been a lot of attention on Wall Street and Fortune 500 companies as our economy has fallen into recession. But today we're going to talk about an area that hasn't gotten as much attention, the nonprofit sector. Our guest today is Dan Palotta. He's the author of the new book, Uncharitable, How Restraints on Nonprofits Undermine Their Potential. Hi, Dan. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Bill. So, Dan, before we dive into your book, I want to ask you about how the nonprofits are faring right now during this time of economic crisis for so many companies. Do nonprofits <laughs> suffer at a time like now? Well, absolutely, nonprofits suffer when the uh, when the assets of the charitable foundations dwindle by thirty, forty percent. Uh, their ability to give money to the various community nonprofit organizations dwindles the same, and 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 when people's uh, discretionary income drops drops because their money in the market drops, they have less money to give to charity. So, yeah, times are going to be equally tough, if not more, for charity. I can imagine that's the case. Not terribly surprising, but it's probably somewhat complex. In your book, you say that society's ethic about nonprofits undermines the ability uh, to eradicate problems. Uh, what do you mean by that exactly? Well, we have to start asking different questions about charity. We have to change the whole way we think about charity. When we ask we have to ask what do we want the nonprofit sector to achieve do we want it just to keep its head above water do we want it to take forever to find a cure for breast cancer or do we want to find a cure for cancer quickly do we want to eradicate homelessness do we want to eradicate poverty and do it while we're still alive if so then we need to give the nonprofit sector a completely different set of permissions than we currently do Fascinating. So you're suggesting that, in fact, we could make more of a business of non-profit in a way and really give it a whole new purchase on what it could do for society. Absolutely. The nonprofit sector has enormous potential. Our compassion has enormous potential, but it's bound up by this Puritan ethic right now. Look at it this way. We have two rule books, one for charities and one for the rest of the economic world. So we don't want people to make a lot of money in charity, but you can make as much money as you want to in the for-profit sector. That just sends all the best business school graduates directly into the for-profit sector and denies the nonprofit sector their talents. We don't like to see our donations spent on paid advertising. Well, what does that mean? It means Budweiser and BMW can advertise on the Super Bowl, but issues like AIDS and Darfur have to be silent. So it's no wonder people are spending more money on Budweiser and BMWs than they are giving to charity. Fascinating. We don't want to see... You, well, yeah. I'm, I'm saying it's fascinating you're using that word Puritan. It's sort of like you're suggesting there's a kind of a split mind here that when society is thinking about being in the mood to give, it gets into a Puritan mode that says, and you don't want to make any money doing that or have the people who do it make money. And when it's thinking about people uh, making a lot of money in a free market, they are in a different ethical headspace, in effect. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are so many contradictions. Think about it. You know, you want to make a million dollars selling violent video games to kids, we say go for it. But you want to make a million dollars finding a cure for cancer, we call you a parasite. You know, the Puritans were capitalists and they came to this country wanting to make a lot of money. But they were also Calvinists and they were taught to hate themselves. So charity became this <laughs> artificial construct where they said, okay, here we'll make all our money. And on this side of the line called charity, that's where we'll deprive ourselves and deny ourselves. That's where we'll do our penance for making money. Well, charity is still stuck with that system. So the, the carpenters and the entrepreneurs of the world got free market capitalism, and the needy got this religion that says you can't pay people very well, you can't advertise, you can't take any chances, you can't think long term because we want all our money spent right now, and you can't earn a profit so there can't be any stock market for charity so all of the capital goes into the for-profit sector through the stock market and charity is left with the donation as its only financial instrument it's an ancient way of thinking we have to completely change that way of thinking give charity the same tools the same freedoms we give to business and amazing things can happen Fascinating. You've been criticized for taking too much of the money you've helped raise. You're the uh, founder of Pilata Teamworks, which invented the AIDS, RIDES, and breast cancer three days. But why do you think that this is flawed thinking by your critics, uh, that you've been taking too much money, for the reasons you've just told us, I presume? 
Well, it's interesting. We netted in nine years $305 million for AIDS and breast cancer. More money raised more quickly for those two causes than any private event operation in history. And people kept asking about what, but what's the percentage, but what's the percentage? You know, you can't find a cure for AIDS with a percentage. You need money to find a cure for AIDS. And we raised more money than anybody had doing events uh, in the past. So when you have this constant focus on percentages, you can start saying that a bake sale that raises 500 bucks and sends 100% of it to charity is better than the mega events like ours that raise $100 million but are expensive and send $60 million to charity because the expenses are $40 million. So are we going to tell kids with cancer, sorry, we had a chance to raise $100 million bucks, but the overhead was going to too, be too right. high, so we passed on it. Right. You know, We're almost out of time. I just want to ask a, 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 Sorry to interrupt. We're almost out of time. I just want to ask a real quick question. If you could change one regulation um, uh, to make a difference to uh, bring the nonprofits more in line with the way you're thinking, what would that regulation be? Um, it would be to create a stock market for charity where we could invest our money as easily in Save the Children and Oxfam America as we can in Toyota and Apple. And off of that money we invest, they could grow, they could pay us a financial return. And, you know, Apple's market cap went up, what, $6 billion today? Um, imagine if Save the Children's market cap went up $6 billion today. We wouldn't be talking about hunger 10 years from now. Interesting. I suspect that this idea is going to get a lot more look as uh, especially these hard times continue and we begin to think about money in different ways. Dan Palata, thank you so much for joining us and bringing, you, uh, bringing us your ideas. Pleasure to be here. And you can pick up your copy of Uncharitable, How Restraints on Nonprofits Undermine Their Potential at bookstores everywhere and online at uncharitable.net.